during, during the education period, but it's, uh, it's, it's good. We're blessed to come out on Wednesday to do sequence in our uh, Bible study and also in our uh, prayer session. So we're going to go ahead and get started by singing like Jesus is on the main line and we'll have scripture and prayer and then we'll go into our Bible study. Jesus is on the main line, telling you what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line, telling you what you want. Jesus is on the main line, telling you what you want. You just Chronicles, 6th chapter, uh, verse 15. Amen. Amen. Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or earth. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant Mm -hmm. David, my father, Mm -hmm. with your mouth you have promised and with your hand you have fulfilled it as it is today and in verse 16 um, the Lord God of Israel keep you keep for your servant David Mm -hmm. my father the promise you made to him when you said you shall never fail to have a successor to mm-hmm. sit before me mm-hmm. on the throne of Israel. Mm-hmm. If only your descendants are careful in all they do to walk before me according mm-hmm. to my law, as you have done. And now, Lord, the God of Israel, let your words that you promised mm-hmm. your servant David come true. Mm-hmm. And may God add a blessing to the reading of this word. Amen. 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 We're going to go on into our um, uh, prayer session. Um, we know that there's uh, uncertainties in our daily life. Uh, there's many challenges, and there's so much corruption that's going on. There's um, you tend to not want to even believe what you hear. Mm-hmm. So we just know <coughs> that we can come and encourage one another to keep the faith and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in all things that we do. Amen. So uh, we're going to uh, entertain a motion, not a motion, but uh, uh, if anyone know anybody that's standing in need of prayer, you can call out their names and we'll have prayer for them. Amen. Amen. Well, my girlfriend told me to um, pray for her and step behind me. She lives in South Indiana. Okay, Stephanie? Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Put her on. Pray for her. Amen. Definitely. Pray for my family, my grandkids, and um, pray for new life and all those to be traveling this season. Amen. 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 I want to continue to pray for our online member, Sister Sterling Burns. Uh, pray for our, our faith. Um, Let's continue to pray for Dottie and, and Emeritus for continue to pray for you and Sister Mayreen, mm-hmm. um, our pastor and wife, family, and um, let's just pray for new life as a whole. Amen. And pray for our world. Amen. Oh, wide world. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for Sister Mayreen. 
I just want to make um, piggyback on our sister Shimonda. I just want to pray uh, for my family near and far. But I also want to pray for people this time of the year. Mm -hmm. you know, this time of the year, we get it confused of uh, what we should be praying for. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people pray for what they want mm -hmm. instead of being grateful and thankful for what God has given them. Mm -hmm. So I just want you know for us to keep each other lifted up in prayer you know, this time of the year. It can be a little stressful for some. It can some people get in depression around this time. Mm -hmm. you know, we just want to keep people lifted up. Amen. Amen. Continue to pray for uh, uh, me and, and Mayreen, and, and as it was mentioned, that uh, we want to continue to pray for those that uh, uh, of New Life and a pastor and a, a evangelist and our, our deacon, deaconesses, and the total church uh, body as a whole. And we want to continue to. Uh, Encourage one of uh, one another, lift us up in, in godly love, and to um, encourage us to, to uh, uh, love one another. Amen. Uh, that's what our season is all about: is the love of God, Jesus, love, love He gave us to us when He told us to to um, uh, seek His face and. Um, and he just wants us to, to uh, remind each and every one of us of, on, on Facebook, on social media, that this is a season that's set aside, mm -hmm. a season uh, to remember Jesus yes. and uh, who he, what he did when he came here to, uh, for the purpose of, um, of saving the lost. And also, he came to bear our burdens. And then, Lord, uh, 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 we just uh, uh, come saying, thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you for um, for just waking us up this morning and yes. giving us another opportunity for another day's journey. Yes. And to walk uh, circumspectively in this world. Uh, focusing on you. Yes. And then, Lord, we come asking, Lord, that you would uh, remember the widows and offerings and, and the destitute uh, uh, that has some of them don't even have a place that they can call their own. Yes. And then, Lord, we just ask that you would touch them uh, <coughs> with the finger of love and uh, that they might have uh, food on, on their tables and have some food to, to eat and place to stay. Uh, we just ask, Lord, that you would just uh, uh, look over the, the names that has been called out to tonight. You know what each one standing in need of. Yes, uh, we're just a servant. Uh, uh, Praying in the name of Jesus that uh, they might be healed, or they might be uh, encouraged, or they might uh, receive love from someone. <clears throat> and then, Lord, um, continue to bless new life in a mighty way yes, that we'll continue to, to show our love to those that stand in the need of. And then, Lord, uh, those names, like I said a while ago, that uh, to, to, to touch them, uh, uh, to watch over them, uh, uh, to uh, raise them up uh, from their afflictions, and uh, to uh, encourage them uh, that, uh, that they will know that there is a God, and, a, and only one God, and we can call on his name any time, any place. Uh, and we just ask that they will have uh, uh, the, the will to understand and know that there is only one God, and only one God alone. Yes, then, Lord, we uh, pray for our, 
our preach word, uh, teach word, and we pray for the hearers, the uh, uh, the listeners, wherever they might be. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, uh, the teach word as it is taught, that we'll have ears to hear and to, and not only to hear the word, but to and not just hide it in our heart, but to take the word into the hedges, highways, and byways to tell sinner men, boys and girls, what they should do to be saved. Yes. And always we ask that you watch over our children, wherever they might be. And continue to put a hedge of protection around them and keep them from all their harm and danger. And Lord, down, bless them that they will not yield to temptation. This is my prayer for Christ's sake in the name of Jesus. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the and Deaconess Young uh, for the red scripture and Deacon Fielder for the prayer. Amen. 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 And since we're running behind time, we're going to get right into the word of God, all right? Because I would like to finish up chapter 11 tonight. Amen. Now, what we learned thus far, Paul has been defending his call to apostleship by boasting. And in verses 22 through 23, Paul says that he will, after all, foolishly boast about himself as the false apostles boast about themselves. Mm -hmm. He calls himself a madman for saying he is better, a better servant of Christ than they are, since a true servant of Christ would never say such a thing. His reason for doing so, of course, is not really brag, to brag about himself, but to show the difference between his actions with those of the false teachers mm -hmm. or apostles. Mm -hmm. When Paul actually begins boasting in these verses, he mostly makes a list of all the terrible things he has experienced mm -hmm. in his service to Christ. Mm -hmm. Now to the Corinthians, who valued strength, position, and privilege, this list would sound only like weakness and failure. Mm -hmm. But in the end, Paul agrees that he is boasted about all the things that show his weakness, mm -hmm. including his very first escape from a royal death sentence from, for declaring that Christ is the Son of God mm -hmm. in a Damascus synagogue. Mm -hmm. Now, as Paul will show in the following chapters, Christ's power is made perfect in the weakness of the servants. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. In, in other words, when we are weak, Christ is strong. Yes. yes. Amen. Paul said, I'll show you a mystery. And what is that mystery? The Christ in us. Mm -hmm. So we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I say that when we do feel like we, when we feel like giving up, the Holy Spirit gives us a nudge. Yes. Mm -hmm. It gets us going toward what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul makes a very good point in these verses. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of suffering and persecution he went through. And I don't know of anybody today, but a few people who will suffer that same persecution. Mm -hmm. And the stoning, the, the whip, the whippings and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And Paul, he really specifies the difference between him and these false apostles. Now, any questions or comments? So if you will, turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. <coughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. And let me get somebody to read that. Are they Hebrew, so am I. Are they Israelite, so am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Amen. Thank you, Sister Paul. Mm -hmm. So Paul asks if his opponents, 
and Corinth are Hebrews, mm -hmm. Israelites, mm -hmm. and offspring of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Now, the context of that question suggests that this group of false apostles were what? All kind of folks. Because mm -hmm. he asked, are they Hebrews? That was the first thing, right? Right. He said, so am I. Mm -hmm. Are they Israelites? Oh. So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Mm -hmm. So this, this, in this context, this group of false apostles were what? Christians? Mm -hmm. Judaizers. Mm -hmm. They were Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, this was a group who thought that faith in Christ was fine so long as Gentile believers also followed Old Testament law for their salvation. Amen? Mm -hmm. So Paul is telling us who these false apostles are. Mm -hmm. And likely these men pointed to their identity as Hebrews and descendants of Abraham to give them credibility with the Corinthians as <coughs> members of God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. Now most of the people in Corinth were Gentiles, mm -hmm. non-Jews. Mm -hmm. So they may have been persuaded by this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now this statement counters any argument the Corinthians should think that these men are superior to Paul. Paul is also a Hebrew. He's also an Israelite and a descendant of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of you, anybody know what tribe of Israel that Paul descended from? The tribe of Benjamin. Now, somebody reads Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. Day. Okay, you can read that. I have somebody else read that. Uh, King James, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm gonna start it here. If someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, mm -hmm. a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisees. Amen. As for zeal, that, that's, that's, that's all the verse five. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the, in our, the the king's name says circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. So we know Paul was a Pharisee, right? Mm -hmm. So while Paul was a Roman citizen raised in the town of Tarsus, he was also from a Hebrew speaking parents, and later became a Pharisee. And none of his opponent, opponents could compete with his Jewish credentials. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, verse 23 says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. In other words, I speak as a madman. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison, more frequent, in deaths, often. So Paul did not concede that these false apostles were ministers of Christ, because he had just called them Satan's servants in verse 15. But now Paul engages in the same foolishness as these deceptive false apostles in Corinth. He says, I speak as a fool. In other words, I speak as a madman. And he began in the previous verse by pointing out that he too is a true Hebrew and a member of God's chosen people, the Israelites. Now, the fact may have given his opponents some credibility with the Corinthians, so he reminded them the same was true of him. Now, Paul's claim to spiritual credentials is, I am more, describing himself as more or, or a better servant of Christ than the false apostles. In fact, he says that to make such a declaration would be the words of a madman, a fool. We should never compare ourselves to other people. Or say we're doing more than other people. Mm -hmm. But Paul is making a point here. So Paul sees such speech as insane because a true servant of Christ should never brag about being a better servant of Christ than another. Mm -hmm. Then Paul goes on to say, in labors more abundant. So Paul's labor had been far greater and may sound like, and it may sound like Paul is bragging about his work that day. However, to to those in the Corinthian culture, 
One who did much laborious work was seen as a failure in life and not a success. So, and the false apostles saw being a minister of Christ as a matter of privilege. In their minds, the more of a minister you were, the less you should have to work, and the more others should serve you. Remember, Jesus Christ said, I came to, I came to serve and not to be served. Mm -hmm. Now, next, Paul begins to describe the suffering he has experienced as Christ's representative, as Christ's ambassador. He says, in stripes above measure, in prison more often, in deaths often. So Paul spent time in far more jails and has been beaten countless times and has often been near death in his ministry. Mm -hmm. Now this would have been odd boasting indeed to the Corinthians ears because they thought success was based on no suffering. Mm -hmm. And from their perspective, Paul is describing a collection of failures, disasters, and losses that go beyond even the recorded episodes of such experiences in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. And we also see here, Paul's boast is genuine. Mm -hmm. He is establishing that he has suffered as Christ himself suffered during his life on earth. In addition, he is establishing the great weakness and fertility, fractility of his life which will amplify the glory of God's strength demonstrated through him. You see, Paul is really boasting about the Lord because it is God that got him through all of, the, all of this and not Paul himself. Amen? Amen. Now, Paul goes on, goes further into further details about his suffering in verse 24. Let me say this. Now, this prosperity, what do you guys know about prosperity, the prosperity teaching? Well, prosperity teaching said if, if, if you're not rich, it's because you're sinning, it's because you're struggling. But Paul says here that he suffered for the sake of the gospel message. Mm -hmm. He had times where he didn't, he don't go into details, he had times where he couldn't even feed himself mm -hmm. or had anybody to feed him. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul felt that his suffering was because of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that's totally contrary to this prosperity stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen? God wants you rich. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's totally contrary to that. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 24 says, Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes except one. Mm -hmm. Now, this verse and the following verses will show the depths of Paul's commitment to, the, to Christ and the gospel. Paul says he received beatings from the Jews five times I received 40 stripes mm -hmm. minus one. Now, Jesus warned his disciples that they would receive such floggings. Mm -hmm. Somebody turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10, verse 17. Matthew chapter 10, verse 17. Going to get but be aware of men, for they will deliver you up to, to the, the council, and they will stone you in the synagogues. Amen. So Jesus told them that these things would happen to them. Mm -hmm. Now, what about these 40 stripes? Now, Deuteronomy chapter, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 1 through 3. Deuteronomy hmm? 25. 25. Deuteronomy chapter 25. Verses 1 through 3. If there be a controversy between men, and they come unto judgment, that the judgment may be judged them. Then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge that, that caused him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault by a certain number. Mm -hmm. Forty stripes he may give him and not exceed. Least if he shall exceed and beat him above these with our stripes, then thy brother shall seem vow 
unto thee. Amen. So Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 1 through 3 stipulates 40 as the maximum number of lashes that could be given. Mm -hmm. Now the fact that he continued, the fact that Paul continued to preach the gospel to the Jewish people and submit to the lashes in order not to be excluded from the Jewish community shows his commitment to his people, which is expressed in Romans chapter 9, verse 2 through 4. Turn your Bibles there. Romans chapter 9, verses 2 through 4. That I have great heaviness and continuous sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that everyone were a curse uh, from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites to whom pertained uh, the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promise. Amen. Five. No, that's it. Um, this shows you the love of Paul for his kings, his, his kinsmen. And when you love somebody, you're willing to do what? You're willing to die for them. Yeah, you're willing to die for them. You're willing to suffer. You're willing to suffer persecution <coughs> and, and things of that nature. And that's what Paul did. I mean, he said to Jews, he was he, he had forty lashes. Five times mm -hmm. from the Jews, mm -hmm. people, his kingsmen, mm -hmm. uh, his, his, his people. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he took that because he wanted them to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior, as their Messiah. Mm -hmm. Paul was truly sent by God because despite everything he went through, he stayed on point and he stayed on mission mm -hmm. and he stayed on his calling. Mm -hmm. Today, too many people say they've been called, but you don't see them at Bible study, you don't see them in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. You don't see him uh, consistently coming to the place of worship mm -hmm. when the doors are open. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to remember that if, if, we, if we've been called by God to do something, we need to do with every might in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 25 says, thrice or three times was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I, was ship I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Paul now adds several more examples. Mm -hmm. He was beaten with rods three times. Mm -hmm. And this was a Roman punishment administered in public. And as a Roman citizen, Paul sometimes avoided being beaten in this way. Citizens were supposed to be given a trial first. Here, though, Paul shows that he did not always escape it. Mm -hmm. Go to Acts chapter 16. To prove this, go to Acts chapter 16. Verses 19 through 22. Acts chapter 16, verses 19 through 22. And when her master said that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and threw them unto the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, these men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up, against, rose up together against them, and the magistrate rent off their clothes and uh, commanded to beat them. And that's Paul and Silas that was beaten. Now, Paul also was stoned for preaching the gospel of Jesus. Amen. Go to Acts chapter 14, verses 19 and 20. Acts 14, 19 through 20. Uh -huh. Then some Jews came from Antioch in Ibram and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city thinking he was dead. But after the disciple had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. He went where? Went back into the city. After they stoned him, okay. Mm -hmm. And the next day, 
he and Barnabas left for uh, Derby. Derby, amen. So Paul was stoned by a crowd in, in, in Lystra that was riled up by Jewish religious leaders from Antioch and Iconium. They dragged Paul's unconscious body from the city and left him for dead. But he soon got up and went back into the city. Now, next, Paul writes that he was shipwrecked three times. Once spending the night and a day drifting on the open sea before, apparently being found and rescued. Now, Paul is often described as journeying by sea or traveling by sea in his missionary travels. Though these three shipwrecks all took place before the one dramatic described in Acts chapter 27. Now, the shipwrecks were not the result of persecution, but Paul did suffer through them as part of his work for the cause of Christ. Mm -hmm. The littlest things can happen to us and we can say we're being persecuted. Amen? Mm -hmm. When we cross the street and, 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 and you know, but Paul, but here, these shipwrecks were just natural disasters that happened to Paul mm -hmm. as he traveled to do the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And sometimes things will cause us, but we'll be in our way in doing the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's just something that, that, is, that naturally happens. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. but, but, he, but it does cause suffering. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, traveling by sea was dangerous, but necessary in order to reach all the territories to which he was called by <coughs> Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? <coughs> Any questions or comments? All right. You know, Paul, what do you say? He, he felt foolish because now he had to give his credentials. Mm -hmm. And the reason he's given these credentials uh, to the Corinthians, so they don't slip back into the, the, this old way that the false teachers. So he's telling them everything that he went through, what he has sacrificed for the gospel, something they had not been through, amen. something they would not do. A a amen. Because they could not boast about those things because they didn't go through any of those things. But through his boasting, it is God who gets the glory because mm -hmm. he talks about in my weakness, Christ is strong. Mm -hmm. And in and, and, and 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. So he's proven a point that even all the stuff I went through is because God got me through. Yes, yes. And they can't say the same things because they have not suffered, suffered anything. And in verse 26, Paul says, in traveling often in pearls, and that word pearls mean danger, mm -hmm. dangers of water, and pearls of robbers, and pearls by my own countrymen, and pearls by the heathen, and pearls in the city, in pearls in the wilderness, in pearls in the sea, in pearls among false brethren. Mm -hmm. So Paul's life of near constant traveling was marked by danger from every imaginable source. Mm -hmm. All these dangers simply add up to a hard, stress-filled life. Mm -hmm. In pearls of waters, this refers to the great dangers Paul faced in crossing rivers as he traveled. In pearls of robbers, one of the worst dangers of traveling in the ancient world were muggers ready to rob isolated travelers in the middle of nowhere. And Jesus illustrated this in Luke chapter 10, verse 30, where he said, get to Luke chapter 10, verse 30. And Jesus answered, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, mm -hmm. which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and reported leaving him at death. Amen. So Jesus told him that these things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. So then Paul says, In dangers in the city. And Paul experienced many hostile mobs in the cities where he preached. Mm -hmm. Go to Acts. Chapter 13, verse 50. Acts chapter 13, verse 50 says, But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city 
and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. Acts chapter 14, verse 5 says, And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitely and to stone them. Acts chapter 14, verse 19 says, And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Acts chapter 16, verse 19 says, And when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. So Paul really did experience danger in the city. Mm -hmm. And Paul goes on to say in danger in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. In his travels, Paul spent more dangerous days and nights in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. In pearls in the sea. And this refers to Paul's many shipwreck and difficulties when traveling by sea. In pearls among false brethren. Mm -hmm. Paul had the danger of those who said they were brothers and his friends, but were false brethren instead. Mm -hmm. Go to 2 Timothy to prove this. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. I used to tell my daughter and sons, not everybody is your friend. Mm -hmm. It's like that song, they smile in your face the whole time. They try to take your place. Y'all know that song? You know yes, backstabbers. Backstabbers. Amen. <laughs> so 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Have you have forsaken me, having loving this present world, mm -hmm. uh, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Uh, Ceres and Galatia, 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 Titus unto Damascus. Now read verses fourteen and fifteen. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me much evil. The Lord rewarded him according to his works. Of whom be thou uh, where of also? For he has greatly withstood our work. Amen. So Paul was among people that he thought were his brother. Amen. And that's why I tell you, not everybody that comes to church is saved. Amen. Amen. Satan sends, sends his apps to church as well to, 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 to cause dissension, to cause issues, to cause problems, to cause discord and, and God will try to do, uh, cause discord in God's body. Now, verse 27 says, any questions or comments? Verse 27 says, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. So now Paul adds a list of ways in which he has experienced physical discomfort for Christ. And this included difficult and strenuous work, sleepless nights, for he says, in watchings often. Going without food or water. For he says, in hunger and thirst and fasting often. And suffering cold and exposure to the elements. For he says, in cold and nakedness. Mm -hmm. Some of this would have been the result of being un underfunded with his work, in his work. While others, while others suffering may have come with being jailed or traveling under harsh conditions. In all cases, Paul understood his suffering to have been directly related to his service mm -hmm. to Christ. Mm -hmm. And today, we are isolated for, from so many of the difficulties Paul faced. Mm -hmm. We can get water and food and warm so much, so much more easily than Paul could ever could Paul ever could. Paul simply lived a hard life as a missionary, traveling and preaching the gospel. And it wasn't the mere fact of a hard life that made Paul a true minister of Christ. Many people have had hard lives, 
but are in no way servants of Jesus Christ. But for Paul, all these dangers and hardships were freely chosen because he could have lived differently if he wanted to, but he didn't want to. Mm -hmm. So he, he wanted to serve Jesus, and if these hardships were part of serving Christ, he would accept them. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all would do that? Amen. How many of y'all would experience hardship for the sake of Christ? I will. Amen. 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 And, let me, and because of this, Paul could say, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. And because of this also, Paul could practice what he preached when he wrote, we also glory in tribulations. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't just spiritual talk from Paul. He really lived it. Paul was, could say it mean that he could mean what he wrote earlier in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 through 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So the pearls of Paul's life were really plenty, uh, uh, plenty enough to kill any man, but nothing or no one could kill him until God finished his purpose for Paul on this earth. And we have to remember that. Mm -hmm. Despite what, what comes up against us, if God has called us to do it, God will prepare the way for us to do it. Amen. Did you also say that he, it wasn't? It was more than just being a servant of God. He had the love of God on the inside for others. He had so God's he grace on his side. Uh, Amen. And that grace is because of God's love for him. Mm -hmm. We have to remember, Paul was called by Jesus Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ taught Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Like the word of God tells us, God will never send us anywhere that he has not been. Or, or, or he'll go ahead of us before we get there. In other words, he will pave the way for us to do what he's called us to do. And if he's called us, it all starts with love. And, and whatever he's called us to do, he will see us through. Mm -hmm. And that's because of his love for us. Mm -hmm. Paul is trying to express here that these are the things I've been through. Mm -hmm. And because of me going through these things, it is God that got me through these things. And none of these false apostles can boast about being, you know, boast about suffering. Because the false apostles, like I mentioned earlier, thought they were privileged. Amen? They wanted people to serve them. They, they didn't think, uh, and, and then that culture, in that Corinthian culture, anybody who struggled, they thought was a weak person. Mm -hmm. But Paul is teaching them here, in my weakness, Christ was strong. Now, verse 28 says, Beside those things that are without, that which come upon me daily, the care of all the churches. The NIV says, Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. So in addition to all the stress or danger Paul previously mentioned, he lived daily with another burden. Paul lived with a care or deep concern for all the churches. The pearls Paul mentioned were not everyday occurrence, but his deep concern for all the churches never left him. Paul's burden were not only physical, but they were also emotional. When you love people, when you have been the vessel God used to bring them the faith in Christ, you are concerned for those people. Amen? And in concern for those people, Paul did a lot of what? Correction. My, my, um, I was always taught that, you know, in playing football, that when a coach stopped coaching you, that means he don't carry anything for you. Y'all heard that before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part of correcting a person is showing the love for that person. Mm -hmm. Amen? 
So if I'm not correcting my children, I'm showing no love towards my children. Amen. Amen. And so Paul really cared about these people emotionally. Mm -hmm. He cared that they that they they ran their race. He he cared that he cared about them if they stumble how to make how to encourage them to get up. Mm -hmm. He really loved these people. Mm -hmm. Now verse 29 says, Who is weak? And I I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. So in the previous verse, Paul added to the list of ways he has suffered. He also experienced great inner turmoil in his concern for all the Christian churches. Some were facing great persecution for their faith in Christ. Others were facing great pressure to compromise their conviction in order to better fit into the culture of the day. And that's something we see quite often today. People compromising who they are in Christ to, to fit in with people. Amen. Now Paul filled these pains and pressures with them. He says in question form that he is weak when they are weak. Mm -hmm. And this likely means that he experienced their weakness of faith along with them. The ideal seems to be that when believers uh, Paul has led to Christ fall into sinful choices, he feels a potent desire to turn them back around and go in the right direction. Amen? If When we see a brother or sister sinning and it's contrary to God, it is our responsibility to say something. Mm -hmm. Because we are our brother and sister keepers. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Now, in other words, Paul's work does not stop when somebody comes to faith in Christ. His involvement only begins there and continue as those believers grow in Christ, suffer for, for Christ, and stumble in their walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. And Paul continues to feel emotionally burdened for all the churches. Another example of the ways in which he suffered as Christ's servant. Any questions or comments? I'm moving right along. Now in verse 30, Paul said, If I must need glory, or if I need to boast, I will boast of the things which concern my infirmity. So what is Paul boasting about? What are his credentials as an apostle? His weakness. His weakness. Anybody else? And his suffering. His suffering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? So what Paul is boasting about and his credentials are simply this. His scars. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The things which concern my infirmity. The infirmity Paul refers to is the life of life of, of the life of hardship and stress he lived as a whole. Mm -hmm. The false apostles would never dream of boasting in such things. Mm -hmm. They thought any infirmity made one look weak and far from God. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember what Job friends told him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, not only kill us, but Joel's friend said, you need to go repent to God because you did something wrong before you begin going through this suffering. Mm -hmm. But Joel had done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. His wife told him that. She mm -hmm. told, his wife told yes. him. Yes. Yeah. And his friends yeah. thought he, yeah. Job had committed this great sin that God was punishing. Mm -hmm. But God wasn't. God was just testing him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, despite Paul's infirmities, Paul did not care if it looked foolish in the eyes of the world, of those in the church who thought like the world. Paul lived with an eternal perspective, not a worldly perspective. Okay? And verse 31 says, The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. Mm -hmm. He knew God knew his, knew his heart. Mm -hmm. Paul recognized that what he just wrote may seem incredible to some, and some may doubt Paul actually lived such hardship, probably even more doubted that Paul could actually boast of such, such hardship. So Paul uses strong language to declare God is his witness mm -hmm. and that he tells the truth. Amen? Mm -hmm. And our last two verses is in Damascus, the governor under uh, Aretas, the king kept the city of Damascus with a garrison desirous to apprehend me 
and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Mm -hmm. This was perhaps the first real danger or hardship Paul faced for Jesus Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. Somebody turn your back, Bibles to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verses 23 through 25. <clears throat> Acts chapter 9, verses 23 through 25. And after that many days for the field, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates <coughs> day and night to kill him. Then uh, the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. So we see here Paul thinks way back to his beginning event. Perhaps thinking that's, that his escape from Damascus was his apprenticeship in persecution. Mm -hmm. It is as if he says, this is how my ministry began and this is how it continues. Mm -hmm. After being confronted by Christ, Paul's mission changed instantly. He had come to Damascus to hunt down and jail Christians. Mm -hmm. And soon after becoming a Christian, he preached in Damascus synagogue that Jesus was Christ and the Son of God. And the Jewish religious leaders couldn't believe what they were hearing and wanted Paul dead. So King Aretas agreed with them and posted guard to catch Paul leaving town and kill him. Paul then called Saul learn of the plot and some of the disciples of Jesus he had been staying with lured him in a basket through a window to allow him to escape the city at night. Paul's point is that a person with worldly wealth, prestige and power would not have needed to sneak away from Damascus to save his life. Paul was powerful only to the extent that Christ was powerful in him. While false teachers brag or boast about their own skills, Paul was content to point only to Christ as his strength. When Paul was in dangers of waters or ro uh, robbers, own countrymen by heathens, in the dangers in the city, in the wilderness, in the sea, and among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness and watching often and hunger and thirst and fasting often in cold and nakedness when he was weak Christ was strong yes, yes. Paul's boast is in the Lord mm -hmm. and not himself mm -hmm. amen? amen Paul never says look what I've done mm -hmm. Paul was saying look what Christ did for me mm -hmm. And all those things he went through, he said, look what Christ did for me. And that alone should let you know that I, he's the one that sent me to you. And I'm pretty sure, and Paul was frustrated with this because the reason they know Christ is because Paul introduced them to Christ. Yes, yes. Amen? Yes. So, so he's very frustrated with these Corinthian believers because they're constantly falling for the okadum. Mm -hmm. And it's no different in the church. Because there's members in the church that will fall for the okey-doke because of outward appearances. Remember, this started with outward appearances and this smooth talk. And we should never fall prey to those things. What we need to do is listen to what is being said and making sure it lines up with Scripture. Amen? Because when we don't, we will receive false apostles and not even false teachers and not even know that what, we're, what they're giving us is contrary to scripture. Amen? Amen. So <coughs> the best advice is the, is the advice from Jesus is to study the show thyself approved. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. And we won't have to worry about these things that the Corinthian believers did back then. Mm -hmm. Falling for whatever uh, uh, whoever comes their way being tossed to and fro from every doctrine that is given to them. Amen? Amen. So, Paul will continue in chapter 12, the first 10 verses, on this subject. But his whole point 
in the boasting, like I said, is to show in his weakness, Christ is strong. Amen. And in our weakness, Christ is strong. Amen. 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 All right, any questions or comments? The only thing that I can say is that, thank God, we don't have to go through the, the sacrifices that Paul had to do Amen. Amen. in order to show that uh, the gospel. Right, you know, to share it. Mm -hmm. However, we do know there is still false teachers. Oh, and amen. Teachers. And Jesus said there were going to be many. Right. And we know that we are ambassadors to Christ. Amen. So when we see or hear those false teachers, don't we supposed to step up and also uh, tell them, you know, say something when we hear That's false good. teaching or when we know that's wrong? We should not entertain it whatsoever. Now, the thing is, is that what, I, what I've learned when I hear things, because I've been, God has afforded me the opportunity to, is when, you know, like, you know, we have this thing, you know, people give a scripture lesson. And one occasion, a person gave a scripture les lesson, which was not scripture whatsoever. But I was the speaker uh, that particular day. And because of me speaking, I made a correction to it. Uh, and for the most part, we are to correct the wrongs. And we are not to entertain false teachers. And if you don't want to say anything to the person, you can easily get up and walk out uh, from not hearing. But I'm the type, <laughs> I'm going to say something. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I do believe, Pastor, that one thing that we have to recognize as believers is that we're going to hear a lot of things. Yes, we are. And some of those things we need to just take in the ear and take out the ear. Right. And so... Um, don't receive. Don't Yeah, just don't receive it. And we'll do that when we become more inept in Scripture. Right. And so, um, because I don't think as a layman mm -hmm. that unless I take someone with me, mm -hmm. then I always like to go in twos. Yeah. Then I'm going to talk to that person, pull them to the side, and say, okay, this is what you said, and let's go over the scripture. Exactly. Because I also believe that, and I always ask the Lord, because I know how I am, mm -hmm. let me speak as honey. Because I want to be vinegar on, and salt on everybody. Right. So let me speak as honey, because I would never want a person to be offended and then leave and say, you're the reason that I never went back to church. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I, because I always look at that as, yeah. you know, I have to ask the Lord for strength, but I also take the second person with me. Yes. Because I do believe that you need to have, for and, lay people, I think we need to have a witness. And you as a pastor, that's different. But I think that me just coming out of, out of the pews, I need to have a witness with me. Right. I need to go as twos. Because that person may say something I may not know, yeah. and then your so word is his. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. Shalom knows, Shalom knows. So that's why I always feel that we should go in. Yeah, twos. because some. I mean, I'm gonna tell you. They went in twos when they went out. Yeah, yeah, they did. And the Bible, yeah. right? Bible say always go with two witnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the thing because there's a you know there's a, some things that are said, and like you said, you have to let it go in one one ear, not the other. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you give people the benefit of the doubt that they don't know scripture very well. And that's when you say, hey, can we study this? Mm -hmm. And that's when you, you use the, the Bible as your, your sword. Exactly. Um, but if they refuse to listen, right. then you got you to gotta take it. You, mm -hmm. you have to take it before people. Mm -hmm. um, because what I've, what, I've, what I've learned is that sometimes it's not good to correct people in front of a congregation. Right. Uh, because they may say, you know, he could have waited to do this or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when it's so blatant, and, and, and I mean, this was blatant. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the Spirit did move me to say something, but I said it kindly, gently, and out of love. Mm -hmm. Because we should never put ourselves as we're special. Mm -hmm. We have a special ability or mm -hmm. things of this nature mm -hmm. uh, before God. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing is, is that, like, I, like you mentioned and like uh, the Word of God says, is that the Word of God is our, is our sword right. uh, because it is our word of truth. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, you have to be very careful in, 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 in certain things because I, I, I pull aside people and say, hey, that's not scripture. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, or say, hey, please look to find that up in scripture and show me where mm-hmm. where that where the Bible says that. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not going to embarrass. I, I, I try my best not to embarrass people mm-hmm. because people are still learning. I'm still learning. Right. Um, but when it's it's repeated and it's repeated, then something has to be said and a correction has to be made on the spot. Mm-hmm. So the people, the congregation, don't believe that it's true. Mm-hmm. Which is being said. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's, it's a it's a uh, opportunity to educate right, definitely. through the scripture. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Well, we're not supposed to be ashamed of the truth anyway. No, no, and, and people shouldn't be offended when the truth is told to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but some people do feel offended mm-hmm. because, and most of, a lot of times, it's because of what they've been taught since kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot of things we were taught as kids that weren't that weren't true, because uh, what what we see as as children when we were young we, we we were oblivious to it. But now as we are older, <laughs> and we in the Word of God, we study the Word of God, we see a lot of things was just a gimmick to get people to come back, uh, get people excited, to get people emotionally and all that stuff to to to. Uh, but we shouldn't have to use a gimmick or, or say certain things to get people emotional. Amen. We, I mean, the Word of God does that for us. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. Now, if I'm going through something, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, <laughs> if it's, if it's a stirred up in me, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, it's gonna come out the mouth. Mm-hmm. But it's stirring me up. Mm-hmm. Amen. But, um, but yeah, you're right. We have to, we have to, we have to really be careful of what we're receiving and entertaining, mm-hmm. uh, because we are in the last days, and Jesus said, and many is gonna come in His name. And the only way we can be careful is what you just said. We have to study. Yes. Because there, there are still false teachers. Yes. He said many will come in my name. Yes. So there are still false teachers. And, and the only way that we don't get, as you just said, okie doke, is we have to study. Yes. I mean, we have to know when the word of God is used totally different what's in the scripture. Exactly. And the only way we can do that is we study. Exactly. And that's like, you know, Paul pointed out here how all the suffering he went through. Well, that's contrary to what prosperity preachers preach. You don't su- if you're suffering, you're, you're sinning, and that's why, you, that's why you don't have a fat bank account. But, but Paul states here, his suffering was due to what he was, what he was doing for Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen? Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, we, we mentioned Job. Um, so we have to be careful on what we receive. Uh, prosperity is just is, is something that's taking the world by storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is un- universalism. Everybody's going to be saved and go to heaven. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we all can coexist. But that's not. I mean, that's that's not as further from the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I and I and I was said until I'm blue in the face. Jesus said, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life." The only way to the Father or to heaven is through Amen. Him. Amen. There's no other way. Amen. There's no other way. Um, just because, I mean, not everybody's going to heaven. That's a reality. Amen. So when you talk about where everybody's doing, be saved, and everybody's, no, that's not what the Word of God says. Mm-hmm. So. All right? Any more? Well, we finish with chapter 11, and we start with chapter 12. What is it? January, what is it? January 10th? January 10th. January 10th, all right. So we'll be off the next two Wednesdays, okay? Well, Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your most beautiful name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. Father, we just pray that you continue circumcising our hearts through your word, Father. We pray that you continue to show us the way through, by the Holy Spirit and that you continue to keep us on the course, that narrow road, Father. Mm-hmm to do your will and to live your way in our life, Father. Father, we lift up to you to all those who have received Christ but but are still not really understanding the word or or or, or not taking the time to go, come join each other or come join together in being taught the word so there's a better understanding. Mm-hmm. And Father, we just pray for New Life Missionary Baptist Church and all the names that were lifted up uh, for prayer, Father. Mm-hmm. And as we leave this place, Father, we pray that you surround us with your heads of protection. Mm-hmm. Give me all the praises on and glory. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. 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 Amen.